And what is up, everybody? And welcome back to Raw is Warbucks. This Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the 2015 WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view on the WWE Network. So right now, we're going to talk about all the matches, some of the rumors, and my predictions. Let's get on with the show. All right, the first match of the night is going to be on the kickoff show, and it's going to be the team of Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, and Neville versus Sheamus King Barrett and Rusev. The original match was supposed to be Dean Ambrose and Randy Orton versus Luke Harper and Braun Strowman, but that match has been pulled because Randy is suffering from a real life shoulder injury. All right, now back to the new match. I'm just going to go with Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, and Neville. But I would not be surprised if we might see the return of Lana. I know she was supposed to be coming back very soon, but there was also this other rumor of her possibly filming some kind of short movie. So maybe she'll make a little appearance. Who knows? But that'd be great to see because we all miss Lana. We really do. All right, now on to the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view itself. The first Hell in a Cell match of the night is going to be Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. I'm thinking since Roman Reigns is on his journey to become WWE Champion at WrestleMania 32, this journey is going to start at Hell in a Cell with a victory. My biggest complaint having to do with all this is why didn't they make any kind of big deal about Eric Rowan's return on Raw? He probably had the most uneventful return, like, ever in WWE. And then on to the WWE Tag Team Championship match. We are going to be having the New Day versus the Dudley Boys. Last pay-per-view, I automatically assumed that the Dudleys were going to win, but, uh, you know, they lost. So I'm going to stand here right now and say that the Dudleys are going to win at Hell in a Cell. Hopefully. It'll be great for them because then they will officially be the, what, 10-time tag team champions? And hopefully they can take the tag team division to new heights because right now it sucks. All right, then next up, we are going to have the WWE Divas Championship with Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. I think it's safe to say that the rest of Team Bella will be down at ringside and Becky Lynch will be in Charlotte's corner. And then that's going to lead to a couple other factors of one, where's Paige going to be? And two, what about Team Bad? Now, an early rumor is that Paige is going to get involved cause a whole bunch of crap during the match and that's going to set up for a triple threat match between Paige, Charlotte, and Nikki Bella at Survivor Series. But then there's also this other rumor of the always beautiful Sasha Banks turning face. Could she turn on Team Bad and then jump into the championship pitcher as well? I think that could end up being a pretty good fatal four-way for the Divas title. And then from there, I'm just going to go ahead and say that Sasha's going to win because we want Sasha Yes, everybody does. Let's move on to the WWE United States Championship title match. It is going to be John Cena versus... Uh, who knows? Nobody knows. It's an open challenge. Now, the rumors for this match could be one. It's going to be Dolph Ziggler. Now, this could be stemming from a storyline from Total Divas where he wants to get back with Nikki Bella. And if this happens, apparently Dolph could turn heel. But then an interesting factor happened this week on SmackDown, and that was the debut of NXT's Tyler Breeze. While Dolph Ziggler and Summer Rae were on Miz TV, Tyler makes his debut and attacks Dolph. Tyler then aligns himself with Summer Rae, so expect that storyline. But keep in mind that John Cena is going to be taking about a two-month break. But I have read that he could end up winning at Hell in a Cell and then losing it the next night on Raw when he's supposed to start his break. Or for some weird reason, John Cena is just going to keep the title and not defend it for like the next eight weeks. I think that would be stupid because all the work that John put into making that belt relevant would just be completely washed away. I have a feeling that we might see Tyler Breeze as the new U.S. champ on Raw. Just saying. And then we are going to be having the WWE Intercontinental Championship match between Kevin Owens and Ryback. I'm just going to make this super easy and say that Kevin Owens is going to win because I am a fan of Kevin Owens. But I do have a feeling that we'll probably end up getting a third match between these two. And God, I hope not. Kevin Owens needs to move on to bigger and better opponents right now. And even though, you know, Ryback's cool and everything... Kevin Owens needs a new story. And then for our final two matches of the night, the first one being for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship between Seth Rollins and Kane. Raise your hand if you give a crap about this match. 
Nobody else? Okay, just making sure. We all know that Kane is not going to win. I don't even know why we're having this match. But if anything were to happen, I'm going to say that Seth Rollins is going to win. And then Sheamus is going to come down, try and cash in. And Kane is going to help Sheamus win somehow, some way, whatever, without any kind of disqualification. But if Sheamus does cash in, that'd be cool. I just don't think he's either going to keep the title for long or... They just had to change up away for Seth, whatever. Uh, it'd be cool if, like, the Shield got back together. I'm sorry they did a horrible job on Raw putting the Shield back together and then just not even, whatever. That was a missed opportunity. Big time missed opportunity for everybody to mark out and get behind Seth Rollins. I'm done. Woosa. And then for our final and second Hell in a Cell match of the night, and that is going to be The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I can see both people winning, so I do not want to make a decision on this match. My biggest concern is The Undertaker. The reason I say that is The Undertaker's age, plus the Hell in a Cell, plus Brock Lesnar. I'm not trying to age shame The Undertaker, but I don't want this being The Undertaker's last match ever. It's not like The Undertaker's back in his early days when he could take all kinds of bumps and thrown into the cage and all that stuff, and we know there's probably gonna be a couple suplexes right into the cage itself. I do see this getting pretty ugly, and The Undertaker saying, look, let's just do it, whatever happens, happens. Whatever the outcome of this match is, I do hope that it is the main event, and oh man, I... Undertaker, please be careful out there. Brock, please be careful with The Undertaker because we do want to see The Undertaker have possibly his final match at WrestleMania, either this year or next. Be careful, guys. All right, guys, that's going to be today's show. Don't forget to leave a comment on the question of the day, which is which match are you looking forward to most? Let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more awesome stuff that we talk about. And you guys have a great day. Stay awesome. And thank you for watching. I'll see you back here on Sunday on my Twitter. Make sure you're following me there. Raw's Warbucks. You can chat and stuff. Yeah.